welcome to this tutorial covering how to create digital signatures in Adobe Acrobat 11 Pro. This tutorial assumes a basic familiarity with the Acrobat program. This tutorial will teach you the purpose of using digital signatures and how to create them. As well, you will learn how to create a digital ID and certificate and you will learn how to validate digital signatures sent to you by others. You will learn how to detect any modifications to a document that was previously digitally signed. Lastly, you'll learn how to remove a digital ID that you no longer intend to use. Digital signatures are the electronic equivalent of pen and paper signatures in that people use them to vouch for the integrity of a document's information. A digital signature can serve various purposes to certify authorship, to approve a document's contents, to indicate that someone has reviewed a document, among other things. Any subsequent changes to the document whether authorized or unauthorized, will be noted by Acrobat. In signing a document, a person can even opt to lock the file so that it may not be altered. In order to use a digital signature, you must also create a digital ID. This is the electronic equivalent of a driver's license or passport, in that it proves your identity to others in an online environment. A digital ID usually holds your name, email address, the name of the company that issued the ID, a serial number, and the ID's expiration date. People commonly request a digital ID online from a third-party vendor. Acrobat 11 Pro offers a way to create your own digital ID from within the program. This method does not offer the same degree of security as going to a third-party vendor but will suffice for documents in most situations. Contained in the digital ID is a digital signing certificate. You should send the certificate to those to whom you intend to email documents digitally signed by you. It is this certificate that contains technology permitting recipients to prove that the signature on your document actually came from you and not someone pretending to be you. I've just opened Adobe Acrobat. No document needs to be opened to create a digital signature. I'm just at the Getting Started screen. The first step is to create the digital signature. And to do this, I'll go to Edit on the menu bar and select Preferences. From the Categories list on the left, I'm going to select Signatures. Then I'm going to go to Creation and Appearance and I'm going to select More. A number of options appear in this dialog box. What I recommend that you have selected is View Documents in Preview Mode under When Signing. Then under Appearances, go ahead and click New. You want to give your digital signature a descriptive title that will enable you to identify it easily in case you should create multiple signatures. Under Configure Graphic, you may opt to add an image to your signature, which I will do here. To do this, click on Imported Graphic and then click on File. Then select Browse and go to the folder where your signature file is located. Mine is here under Documents, but it's set to display only PDF files by default, 
So I'll need to change it to the type of file that my signature is, and it happens to be, in my case, a ping file. So I'll select ping, and my signature uh, image appears. I'll double click on it, and I preview it here in the window, and then I'll click OK. Under Configure Text, you would generally select to appear as part of your digital signature your name, the date, and the reason for the signature, such as document approval. So I'm going to deselect these other options that are currently selected. And then I'll click OK. And then I'll click OK once more and I'm returned to the Preferences menu. Back here in Preferences, I'm going to go to Identities and Trusted Certificates and select More. You want to make sure that Digital IDs is selected in the upper left corner of this window, and then you'll want to click on Add ID. And you have choices here. You want to make sure to select a new digital ID I want to create now. Then click Next, and it defaults to the new PKCS number 12 option, and that you want to keep. So we'll click Next, and then you'll enter your personal information. Leave the key algorithm as is, and where it says Use Digital ID 4, normally just click on the down arrow and choose Digital Signatures. Then click Next. The following screen allows you to choose the location on your computer where you'd like to store your digital ID and prompts you to create a password for it. Make sure you remember your password but never share it with anyone. And remember, passwords are case sensitive. I'll save mine to Documents and I'll create a password for it. And then I'll click Finish. Your digital ID displays in the Digital ID and Trusted Certificate Settings window. The digital certificate is embedded inside your digital ID. To view certificate details, simply double-click on your digital ID listing. Information about the certificate is displayed in the various tabs within the certificate viewer. I'll click OK when done, and then I'll close out the Settings window. And I'll click OK to close Preferences. You will probably want to email in advance a copy of your digital signing certificate to those whom you intend to send digitally signed documents. Those who receive copies of the certificate will have your name added to their list of trusted identities and can easily vouch for the authenticity of your digital signature. If you've exited the Preferences menu, simply go back in, go to Edit, Preferences, and then make sure Signatures is selected, and then go to Identities and Trusted Certificates and click More. This is the same screen where we added a digital ID. This time we're going to click on the ID and then select Export. You'll see a message that says you have chosen to export the following data and it asks, do you want to email the data or save the data to a file? 
So what we'll do is save the data to a file. And this will be the name of the certificate, and I'll save it to my documents. It is an FBF format file. I'll click Save. Save operation is complete. And then I can go into my email and send this to whomever I want as an attachment. I've opened up a PDF file to which I'd like to add a digital signature. I'm going to scroll to the bottom of the document, which is where I'll want to place it, and then I'm going to click on Sign, and then I'm going to choose Work with Certificates. From here, I'm going to select Sign with Certificates. A message appears explaining how to create a signature field, and I'm going to go ahead and click Drag New Signature Rectangle. My mouse pointer changes to a crosshair, and I'll draw a box over the portion of the document where I want to add the signature. You'll get a message that you're in signature preview mode says please review the document before you sign. I'm going to go ahead and choose Sign Document. Acrobat displays the Sign Document dialog box. Here I will choose my signature from the Sign As window. I only have one. It's George Washington. So I'll select that and then I'm prompted to enter my password that I created earlier. and then I'm going to choose the signature file name I created from the appearance list. And under additional information, the reason for my signing is I am the author of this document. You can select whichever option applies to you. When done, I'm going to press sign. I'll then be prompted to resave the file and I'll do so. The signature will appear on the document with whatever information I've chosen to display, my name, the date and time of email, and the reason for signing. Everyone to whom you send a digitally signed file will need to have a copy of your digital certificate in order to authenticate your digital signature. So you'll need to email that ahead of time to the person to whom you're going to send this file. The message above my document says, Signed and all signatures are valid. As I have the digital signing certificate saved to my computer, Acrobat knows that this is a valid signature I've added. I'll close this file now. Next, I'll show you how best to configure how you validate other signatures. For this, we'll go back to the Edit menu and choose Preferences. And then under Categories, make sure that you select Signatures. Then, under Verification, click on the More button. In this dialog box, there are a few items that you should make sure to have selected. The first is Verify Signatures when the document is open. And then below, Require Certificate Checking to succeed whenever possible during signature verification. This process runs the certificate against the list of revoked certificates as part of the validation process. And also, under When Verifying, select Use the Document Specified Method and Prompt if unavailable. All those are check marks, so I'll click OK.
and then I'll click OK once more to exit preferences. If someone emails you his or her digital certificate in advance of sending you a digitally signed document, you'll see a data exchange file import contact dialog box when you open the file. So I've got the file here that was sent to me and I'm going to double click to open it. And then I'm going to go to Set Contact Trust. In this dialog box under Trust you'll want to select Use this certificate as a trusted route. To allow actions that could potentially compromise document security such as playing embedded video segments Check mark Certified Documents and any of the boxes below that you choose. And then I'll click OK. You'll see a message indicating that the import has succeeded. Click OK to close the message and then close the data exchange file. I now have saved on my computer the digital certificate for James Madison. I'd like to go open a file that contains his digital signature. I'll do that, go to open, and here's a file from James Madison to George Washington, digitally signed. The digital signature is at the bottom, and up top you see the message signed, and all signatures are valid. So Acrobat automatically scanned for that digital certificate and recognized it. If you do not see this message, but you have the digital certificate, it probably means that Acrobat is not configured to scan automatically for digital certificates on your computer as you open the file. You can still validate the signature using the steps outlined in the next section. If you receive a PDF file with a digital signature that you have not validated, you may see an error message stating that at least one signature requires validating or at least one signature has problems. You will need to go in and manually validate the signature. So on the left hand pane, you're going to click on Signature and you'll see the signature listed in blue. And if it isn't, just click once on it to highlight it. And then go to the Options button, just located above the signature, and choose Validate Signature in the list of options. If you have received a copy in advance of the digital certificate from the sender and have designated it as a trusted route, you will see the message stating that the signature is valid. And when you close that message, the document will now state that the signature is valid. I'm going to close this file and I'm going to open a file sent by Thomas Jefferson whose digital signature I have not yet received. So I'll see that at least one signature has problems. I'm going to go to the signature button on this navigation pane and signed by Thomas Jefferson. I'm going to click on Options and go to Validate Signature, as I did before. But this time I get a message, Signature Validity is Unknown. So then I have two options for handling this. I can request the digital certificate to be sent to me from the sender. That's probably the easiest way. And once I have it, I can save it on my computer, and Adobe Acrobat will remember the location. And then I'll open the certificate and establish the person as a trusted group. Another way is to compare the digital certificate contained within to that which the sender has. So if you go to Signature Properties and select Show Signer's Certificate, you can tab through the various details 
and contact the sender and see if we match. But that's a little more complicated. So the best thing to do is simply to have the sender give you the digital certificate and then open it that way. So I'm going to close this. I've just received the digital certificate from the sender. So right now I'll minimize my document and I'm going to open up the digital exchange file for Thomas Jefferson and I'm going to go to set contact trust and here's what I need to do use this certificate as a trusted route and if I want to certify dynamic content or other things I can do that but I'll just simply stick with this and click OK and it says that my contact has been imported correctly. So I'll click OK and then click Close. Now if I go to Options and choose Validate Signature, I get a message saying the signature is valid and it says so up here as well. So I'm good to go. Let's say I would like to comment on this document. I'd like to add a sticky note. So I'll click here and place my sticky note there and type in my comment. And then minimize. I could try to edit text too if I want, but I'm not actually allowed to go in and edit the actual content because the document's already been signed and cannot be edited. But I can make little changes like this. And if I go then to File and choose Save, if I close and open the file again, I'll see this. Signed and all signatures are valid, but with unsigned changes after the last signature. And you'll see here, annotations created. So you can be aware of exactly where somebody has modified a document after it has been digitally signed by the document creator. I'm going to go ahead and close this. The last thing I'll show you is how to remove a digital ID. You can delete the digital ID you've created if you no longer plan to use it. To do so, go to Edit on the menu bar and select Preferences. And then make sure Signatures is selected. And then, by Identities and Trusted Certificates, click More. and click once on the digital ID you intend to remove and then select Remove ID. You're prompted to confirm the deletion as this will be permanently removed so I'll click OK and I'll need to enter my password. The digital ID has been removed permanently and we're done. I'll close this out and close preferences. Thank you for watching this series of tutorials. Good luck!